Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number 55 in our incredible tutorial series where we're learning artificial intelligence on the Jetson Nano. I'm going to need you to pour yourself a nice big mug of iced coffee. Today I will be enjoying supplemental backup caffeine in the form of hot coffee. And I'm going to need you to get ready to learn some cool new stuff. So let's go ahead and let's get out our Jetson Nano gear. And while you're getting out your gear, as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. Your help and your encouragement keeps this great content coming. You guys that are not helping out yet, think about looking down in the description. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. Hey, seriously, guys, uh, you know how I've in the last videos been having problem with my video, uh, my camera video freezing in the middle of the lesson? Hey, that was because I was using kind of a low-end cam link board for grabbing the uh, HDMI signal coming off of the cameras. I was able to upgrade that to a really nice Magwell uh, board, and we should not have any more of those uh, glitches. So again, thank you guys that are helping me out over at Patreon. You allow me to keep the good equipment rolling in here and the good content coming. Okay, so enough of this talking about Patreon. Let's talk about what we are going to learn today. What we are going to learn is we are going to learn how to train a deep neural network. Now we started working with deep neural networks I think in about lesson number 50 and that's when we installed those uh, NVIDIA Jetson utilities and they allowed us to go in and work with some of the pre-trained networks like the AlexNet and the GoogleNet and the ResNet 18. There were pre-trained networks that we downloaded and then we could run those networks and we could recognize things like teapots and cats and dogs and things like that. So that was really, really cool. And some of those networks, I think, could uh, could recognize like a thousand different items. And so that was really powerful. But the problem is, is that in general, in artificial intelligence, you and I don't need to recognize a thousand items. We need to recognize a smaller number and kind of differentiate between is this an apple or is this an orange? And chances are the things that we really want to do those pre-trained networks aren't going to work for. So what we're going to learn today is we're going to learn how to train your own network. Now this is the problem. If we were to try to train a deep neural network from scratch, we would have to have thousands and thousands of images taken very carefully and classified very carefully. And then we would have to have just an unimaginable amount of CPU time to actually build the network. And so it would not be something that we could do at home with our desktop PC or excuse me, or with our even like a Jetson Nano or a Jetson Xavier, we would have to have a major GPU sitting on our desktop or we would have to go out up to the cloud and kind of rent a GPU to do the training from scratch beyond the scope of what we can do as individuals. But the good news is you don't actually have to start from scratch. You can take one of those existing networks and you can retrain it for the objects that you're interested in. And this retraining is called transfer learning. We're going to transfer learning to an existing network. And that is what we are going to do today. Well, to do that, we have to figure out what to train it on. I'm going to train it on six different items. Now you could train it on whatever six items you are interested in, but I decided it'd be kind of neat to create a deep neural network that could recognize different single board computers. And so what we're going to do today is I'm going to train it to recognize an Arduino Uno, a Raspberry Pi Zero, an Arduino Nano, and a Raspberry Pi 3 a Jetson Xavier NX, and our old friend, the Jetson Nano. And so that is six single board computers. And what our goal is today is to train it on these things. If you don't have those six, if you just have three of them, train on those three. Or you can train on something else. Maybe you would want to do fruits. Maybe you would want to do bananas, oranges, mangoes, peaches, 
you know, that type of thing, apples. Okay, so pick up six fruit and train it to recognize and differentiate between those six different types of fruit. <coughs> okay, so enough of this talking. Let me uh, have you go ahead and call up a fresh new terminal. And then I had better get out of your way because you get very angry at me when I am in your way. And what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create some swap space because to run this training or this transfer learning, we are going to need more memory than what the Jetson Nano has. So we need to create some swap space. That's where you go out and kind of use the SD card in the place of memory. And so to create that swap space, we need to do a sudo. And let me see, I'm going to go back to home, back to my home directory. Okay, we're going to do a sudo f allocate, f allocate. I think you can see that, right? sudo f allocate and a minus L. And then we want to allocate 4G of space, 4 gigabyte of space. And then we want to put it at slash mnt slash 4gb dot swap like that. So that will create that, that will allocate that swap space. Now we need to go ahead and make it so we will say sudo m m k s w a p sudo m k s w a p and what we just created slash m n t slash 4 g b dot swap like that. Okay. Uh, it's giving me a little complaint there, but that should be okay. That should not be an issue. And now what we are going to do is we are going to go ahead now and turn the swap on. So we will say sudo swap on, sudo swap on, turn the swap on, slash mnt slash 4gb dot swap. Now we have our swap on. The next thing we need to do is make sure that when we reboot, the swap comes back. And so we will need to do that by editing our FS tab file. And we can do that. It's a system file, so we will need to sudo. And then we will need to gedit and then slash etc slash fstab. Okay, let's see. There we go. Boom. Comes up. And we need to add the swap file here. And so we will add to the end <coughs> another line. And that line is going to be slash mnt 4g 4gb dot swap mount slash 4gb dot swap and then we're going to put none space swap space sw space zero space zero. Okay, so we've got slash mnt slash 4gb dot swap space none space swap space sw space zero space zero. Now we will need to save that. And it looks like it's saved. And then we can close out of this. And we should be in good position. It looks like it complained about something there. But we should be OK. Just a minor complaint. And I'll clear this to get us back up to the top. <clears throat> OK. So now we have our swap file created. OK. Now remember in lesson number 50 we did and I got to tell you guys that this lesson is a follow on to lesson number 50. So if you're just hopping into the middle of these lessons, you've got to go back and at least do lesson number 50 because that's where we installed these libraries and the uh, Jetson utilities. You've got to do what I did in lesson number 50 or this lesson isn't going to work. So uh, those of you who are playing along though have already done lesson number 50. And so if you're in your home directory and do an ls we want to go to download so cd downloads okay and an ls since you did lesson number 50 you've got that folder jetson inference so we want to work in there so we are going to cd down into jetson 
inference okay and now ls and so that all looks good so we need to create a folder in which we can put our training data so i'm going to create a folder mk i guess uh, i should not call it a folder i should call it a directory mkdir for make directory and i'm just going to call it my train and so this will be a folder where we put our training data now we need to go down into that so i'm going to say cd into my train okay now i'm in that folder that i created all right now the first thing that we need to do in training or transfer learning is to create a text file that has the classes of objects that we are going to recognize okay and so what we will need to do is i'm going to inside my train i'm going to g edit g edit and then a file we're going to create called label.txt now this doesn't exist so by editing it it will create it labels plural labels.txt like that okay now we come up with an empty file but what i need to do is i need to give the name of my classes and i need to give them in alphabetical order all right and so what I will start with is I will start with, uh, let's see, it's hard to do alphabetical order on the fly, but I will start with the Arduino. Uh, would Nano or Uno? Nano would come first. Nano, Arduino, Nano. And then I will do the Arduino uh, Uno. Those are still in alphabetical order. And then I will do the Jetson Nano. And then I will do the Jetson Xavier and X. So that's four. And then we have the Raspberry Pi. And let's see, we would do the three Raspberry Pi three and then Raspberry Pi zero. Why am I doing three and zero? Because I know <laughs> for sure that it will work alphabetically that way. I'm not sure about if I put a number there, whether it knows in a smart way how to do alphabetical order. But those now are in alphabetical order. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's what we said we were going to train on. So we are going to save that and we should be good there. Okay, after saving it, we can kill it. Okay, now what we are going to need to do is, I'm going to need to do a little bit of Windows management. Let's see here. I should have had this done before. Okay, so now what we are going to need to do is, we are going to need to start capturing our training data. Okay, and Dusty over at NVIDIA, who sort of put this stuff together, he put together a nice little training program that makes it really easy to capture the images that we need and put them in the right spot. And so in order to get there, we need to go back to home. So I'm going to CD back to home, and then I'm going to CD into downloads, and then LS, I'm going to CD into Jetson inference and then I'm going to CD into tools okay and if I LS you see that there is a program here called camera capture and that is the program that is going to allow us to begin to put together the training data like if we're going to recognize the Arduino Uno it's got to know what the Arduino Uno looks like Okay, let's uh, go ahead now and let's see if we can launch that capture, that camera program. And we do that with the command C-A-M-E-R-A -E camera dash capture. And now we've got to give it the width and the height. Now make sure that you're using a width and a height that you know that work with your webcam. Because if you use the wrong 
if you use the wrong uh, width and height it'll crash the program but I know for my ELP I'm using my ELP today and I know that it will work at width dash dash right you see my dash dash width equal 800 space dash dash height equal 600 like that and then again dash dash camera and the camera is going to be equal to for me slash dev slash video one all right now if you're using the raspberry pi camera you don't need to give the camera command it should just default to that on its own okay it should just default to that camera on its own if you're using a webcam it's probably going to be slash dev slash video one and you will probably want to put that in so let's hold our breath boom look at that okay it is live it is live all right we are making some progress we're going to have to train things and we're going to have to tell it a couple of things <clears throat> we're going to have to tell it where the data set is where what is the path to the data set so we're going to click here and then we are going to go back to our uh let's see we're going to let's just go to desktop and then let's go to downloads and let's go to Jet, Jetson inference. And then remember, we did my train. We created a folder for this, my train. So once I get there, we're going to say open. So that's where all these pictures are going to be. Now it wants to know where the labels are. Remember, we made the label file and it was in Jetson inference and then it was in my train. And there's our label file. So we got to tell it those two things. All right. Now I'm going to go over here and look with my file explorer. OK, and let's go to downloads and let's go to Jetson inference and let's go to my train look at that boom okay so when we ran this camera program it went ahead and set the folders up it set the folders up for all these pictures to go into now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to have three types of pictures the first type of picture are the training pictures so if i'm going to train it on the jetson xavier what i'm going to need is like a hundred training pictures and to get a good training picture you don't want to like have it here because it doesn't know what you're training. Are you training on the microphone? Or are you training on this? Are you training on my face? So you want something where, let me get this out of your way. You want something where what it sees is what you're training on. And that's why I kind of like this ELP camera with the little tripod because it lets me get a nice good view. And so what I'm going to do is, what would be the problem with training like this? Well, the problem with training like this is there's other stuff in the picture, and it's other stuff that we actually are going to train on. So that would be horrible. All right. So you don't want these other things in the picture. So we got to get all that stuff completely out of the frame. And then even uh, what I like is I like to do it with nothing but just the uh, gray background. So as much as I can, I'm going to try to have nothing but the gray background. OK, let's see. That looks pretty good. And then I want a nice clear picture and I want to focus on it. OK, so that is nicely focused and in a position where there's nothing in the picture but what I want. All right, so now what I would need is a hundred pictures for training. And so how would I do that? Well, I would go like one, two, three, four, five. Now make sure your hand's not in it. You don't want to train on the hand. So I would go like one and then two and then three. And so you can get all those. Well, when you go all the way around, that might be like 25 pictures. Well, then come from a different angle, like come down low and get it kind of like at this angle. You see the kind of like coming in from the side angle and spin it around and take the pictures. And then come up high and then shoot kind of straight down on it like that and then go around okay so you kind of like take 25 pictures go 25 spinning it around 
then change the camera angle from steep to 45 to shallow and the more pictures you do the better it's going to work okay the more pictures you do the better it's going to work but those what would you do you would come in here to train because these are training pictures and then you would come into this is the Jetson Xavier NX okay and then what we would do is we would just do, uh, like if we're going to start taking pictures here uh, for training, we would go like this. I'll kind of get you started. I'm not going to make you sit and watch me take 600 pictures. Okay, I'm just going to get you started. I would go space bar, that took a picture. Turn it, space bar, that took a picture. That took a picture. Space bar, space bar, space bar spacebar okay I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do a hundred of those and I'm gonna come in and then I'm gonna get a different angle and I'm gonna take like a hundred pictures and try to have it where the item is all the way in the picture okay try to have it where the item is all the way in the picture all right and that is gonna fill out so now if, like if I go to train and I look in the Jetson Xavier NX you can see those pictures that I just took okay those are training pictures all right now after you do the training then you need to come in and do the validation pictures so validation are pictures that it doesn't train on but after it trains itself it says okay I'm gonna go look at these pictures and I'm gonna see how well I'm doing so it kind of tests itself with the validation pictures and so what you want is you'll want a hundred pictures a hundred training pictures for each one of the boards okay so you're gonna do uh, and it's probably better to look at it up here so what you're gonna do is you're gonna come to train and then you're gonna come to let's start with the nano say you're gonna put the Arduino nano there and you're gonna take a hundred pictures of it all different angles but I think it's good to have a common background okay which is the gray background but lots of different angles you're gonna take a hundred pictures for training on the Arduino Nano then you are gonna to come to the evaluate or the valuation and then you're gonna take about 20 pictures so those are just pic pictures for it to sort of see how well it's doing so a hundred train pictures 20 validation pictures and then if you want some pictures for you to test you can do some test pictures that you can play with later and say two or three four or five that's all you need just a few of those so now we finish this then we'll go to the next board and so we want to come back and we want to go to the Arduino Uno and then we want to go back to train and then again a hundred pictures okay you got to get that training set put together and then when you do that what it will do is it will populate all of these folders right so we are in downloads and we are in jets and inference and we are in my train and it will like if I look under train there's a folder for each of the items that I'm training how did it know that it got them from the labels file okay so you can go and you can do all of that yourself now if for some reason things aren't working for you and you absolutely cannot do that you can come to my github that's github.com slash m c w h o r p j and then go to the slash board training data okay and you can get that and you can uh, say clone or download and then you can hit the little icon there you can hit here right mouse click copy and now you can come back to that folder and uh, let me open up a new terminal uh, I don't need to do it but you can just do a get clone and that inside of that folder and it will go get all of my pictures for you I really do need to show you that just in case you guys are not able to get your camera going so you can say open terminal and then you can say CD into uh, downloads jet sun 
Jetson inference. Okay, uh, Jetson inference, and then you can uh, let's see here. You can do Jetson inference, and then we said it was my train like that. Oops. Let's go change directory downloads slash Jetson inference ls and it is changed directory into my train like that okay now what you would do is just do a get clone and then paste that uh, paste that address in there and it will go and it should pull down all the training data I put together if you want to use my training data okay but really are you really training it if you are using my training data? I don't think so. I don't think you're really training it if you are using my training data. So I hope you will really go out and train this thing yourself by hitting the space bar, hitting the space bar, hitting the space bar. And so you'll do train. After you train, then you'll do 20 valuation, and then you'll do just a couple tests, and then you will move to the next one. So I'm going to ask you guys to go ahead and do that, and then I will pause the video, and I will come back in a minute to show you the next steps after you have taken all of your pictures. Okay, guys, hopefully you have taken all your pictures. I have taken all umpteen jillion of mine. And so let's go ahead and kill this. Uh, let's go ahead and kill this uh, training capture, uh, training image capture. And now let's go in and make sure that our folders look right. So I'm going to open up my file manager and then I'm going to go to downloads. I'm going to go to Jetson inference and then my train. Uh, let's see, this does not belong in there. You won't have that, but let me uh, move that to the trash. Okay, so I've got my labels file, and then I have my test data, my train data, and my valuation data. If I come to train, or I come to any of those, I'll see all six of the items. And then for training, it's the one that had like a hundred pictures each. Okay, so there are all my pictures. That all looks very good. That all looks very good. And so now I need to come back to uh, my file here. Give me just a second to get back to where I was. Okay, so we now have everything. We have all of our images, okay? And like I say, you can get the images that I use from GitHub, but if you do that, you've got to make sure, because I think that if you just come and do it the way I showed you, there's just one thing that you've got to see, that if I go to Downloads, Jetson Inference, My Train, you'll probably end up with a folder and all of this stuff inside of that folder where you've got to get it out of that folder and put it here. Okay, you've got if there's an extra folder, it's going to be my GitHub and you take everything out of that lower folder and put it in this folder and then you should have everything just exactly the way I have it here. All right, so let's see what we can do here. <clears throat> I think we are ready to train this thing now. Okay, so to do that, we need to go uh, CD and we need to go back home and then we need to go to downloads. Okay, and then we need to go to Jetson inference. Okay, let's look at that. Misspelled it Jet Jetson inference like that. And now LS. And now we want to go to Python. So we're going to CD into Python. And then we're going to see, uh, let's LS. Okay, we want to CD down into training. Okay, and now LS. And now we want to CD down into classification, like that. <coughs> okay, so now we are in the right folder. Okay. And now let's just look and see what's in there. All right, these are the uh, various things. Your might, yours might look a little bit different than mine. 
But now what I need to do here, I need to actually train the model. So I'm going to say Python 3 because we're running on Python 3. I'm going to get further out of your way before I block you. Python 3. And then we're going to run train.py. That's this program that you see here, train.py. And now I have to tell it what do I want my model to be called, right? And so I've got to go dash, dash, two dashes, dash, dash. And then I'm going to say model dash dir is equal to, I'm going to call it my model. So I'm going to create a deep neural network. I'm going to create a model. I'm going to call it my model. And now i got to tell it where the data is. Well, the data is at home and then slash downloads slash <clears throat> you ought to be good at this by now jet sun inference and then where did we put it we put it in my train so it's got to know where to go find all those pictures so it's in my train <clears throat> so what matters it matters a whole lot that you start in this folder because that's where it's going to put your model so you need to be down here in this folder and then it will find train.py right here and then it will put my model right here but it's got to go over and it's got to find your training data which is what you do here so check this before you enter it okay check it before you enter it I think mine looks good let's make sure that it runs here Okay, now what this is going to do is it's going to run 35 epochs. Okay, an epoch is sort of like a grand optimization. And it's going to do that grand optimization 35 times. And that probably very well could take like 30 minutes. And so, so let's go ahead and pause the video and let's get together after your training. Okay, guys, did you get your model trained? Mine took, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes. I had lunch while, uh, while it was training. But you see that we completed all 35 epochs. And now the real question is, you know, how well is it going to work? But there is, I'm sorry, one more little step that we have to do here. We're staying in this training slash classification folder. Make sure that you're still in that same folder. And the thing is, is that the PyTorch creates a model in one format. Uh, and then the uh, Jetson Utilities wants a different format. So we have to kind of export the model from PyTorch into uh, something that uh, the Jetson Utilities is going to like. Uh, let's see if I do a ls here. ls. You can see that there is a program called onnx export. <clears throat> so we are going to want to run python 3 and then we, we are going to want to run uh, let's see we are going to want to run that program o n n x underscore export I'll get out of your way o n n x underscore export dot pi <coughs> that's the program we're going to run now we got to tell it what model we're running on okay do you see how now we have something we didn't have before my model that was created by the training and that is the one that we are going to convert so it is going to be model dash directory so we have uh, dash dash model dash dir okay is equal to my model right and that's this my model here you notice my model's a folder it's got the stuff down in it well, now it's going to get more stuff down in it. So let's hope this works. Okay, I think I clicked enter. I always get nervous when the cursor stops blinking. But then you got to be patient. you got to be patient. Hopefully something will happen here in a second. <clears throat> okay, yep, let's see. Oops, look.
looks happy so far. That's good. This will probably take two or three minutes to do, but we'll just sit and chat while we're doing this. Okay, it's exporting model to ONNX. That's good. And uh, we will just sit here and wait a second for this to work. Enjoy a little coffee while we're sitting here. Okay, now as this model, once we get the model done, then what we're going to do is we're going to open up a program and we're going to see if we can do the, uh, the object recognition, right? We're going to see if we can recognize the objects from the live camera once we have our model. <clears throat> and this will be kind of a big step forward. We did a little bit of the training with the facial recognition where we could train it on one person versus another person. That worked amazingly well. But if you're just going to go out and arbitrarily find something like, you know, a board or an apple or an orange or whatever, you really have to do a lot more work on the, uh, you've got to do a lot more work on the training. And so... <clears throat> That's why you need so many pictures. I'll tell you also, I played around with this for the last three or four days. It really, really, really matters that you get a good uh, that you get a good data set and getting good, sharp, clear pictures that don't have a lot of distractions in there make a big difference. Boom. Okay. It says that our model was exported, so I'm going to take that as a good sign. Okay, so now we are ready to write a program, <clears throat> and we will come over and uh, open up a new Visual Studio code and we will be coding in deep learning 10.py that is the program and I am working inside of my NVIDIA folder and this is deep learning 10.py is the program and we want to start where we left off in lesson number 52 and so I need you to go to the most excellent www.toptechboy.com I need you to search on uh, AI on the Jetson Nano lesson number 52 and you end up here and remember this is where we were improving the quality of the image coming off the Raspberry Pi camera but also if you remember here we had this little bit of code it's not this first one okay it's down below it and it's the option number one which is to launch the camera using OpenCV and this is doing the image recognition the object recognition using OpenCV for for the camera and so we're going to go ahead and click on that and then we're going to right mouse click and copy and then we're going to come back to our program and we are going to paste it in okay and what this program is doing is it is running our old friend let me get this uh, <clears throat> file browser out of the way this is firing up the camera and this is using the Raspberry Pi camera I want to use the webcam because the webcam is easier to point so I'm going to comment out the Raspberry Pi camera and I'm going to go with video one now it's very important that when we're using these Jetson inference tools that we know what our uh, width and height is and so we don't want to just use the defaults we want to actually set them on the, the cameras using these two commands they were already in the program I just uncommented them out and I do believe that I am on video one so that looks good all of that stuff looks good uh, for my camera, I am using the ELP camera, so I really need to say 800 by 600. I don't think the ELP camera does 1280 by 720. Uh, if you have the Logitech camera, you could probably use 1280 by 720. You've just got to use one that the camera will accept or your program will crash. <clears throat> okay, so what really matters here is this right here where we set up our ImageNet model. And before we had just said AlexNet. Well, now we're using a custom model. So what we've got to do is we can leave AlexNet or uh, GoogleNet or whatever you have there. That's okay. But now we've got to put in the real model that we're going to do, and that's with a second set of parameters. So it's a little bit goofy. You've got to use, you've got to leave this in here, but it's going to ignore it. And you put a comma, and now what you need to put in is you need to put in an array, and you start that array with 
an open bracket. It closes the brackets for you. And now we've got to tell it what model we're really going to use. And the model that we are really going to use is dash dash model equal. And I need to make that a string. So I open my string. OK, you see how I open my string there? Then dash dash model is equal to model is equal to and we can kind of just go to your home directory right and then where did we go we went to downloads and then where did we go we went to jet sun <coughs> inference remember that and then remember we went to python and then we went to training and then we went to uh, let me let me adjust my view here for just a second little windows management we went to classification after that okay we went to classification and then we went to and we we better look over here uh, I think it was my model. So let's go to Jetson Inference. We went to Python. We went to uh, Training. We went to Classification. And then it was my model there is what we did. So then I will come here and I will say my model like that. And then inside of my model, was resnet 18onnx Now this ResNet 18 is the ResNet 18 that we trained with that training that we just did and it put it in the my, mold, my model folder folder but it still named it resnet 18onnx and then we're going to end that string that we created and now we have to put a comma and then make another uh, another string, okay? And this is going to be dash dash input blob input blob input blob is equal to input underscore zero. All right. Now we're going to move out of that string and put a comment. And now we're going to put dash dash output blob output blob and that should also be in a string okay so string output blob is equal to output output underscore zero okay and then in the string and now we got to tell it where the labels are and so we're going to start another string, dash dash, labels equal. And then we're going to go to our home with the squiggly. And then we are going to go to downloads and then to Jetson inference. Okay, Jetson inference. And then <clears throat> we had a folder. And what did we call that folder? Uh, let's go back to Jetson Inference. And then we called that My Train, right? And then Labels. So we went to My Train and then slash labels. Dot txt. So we're pointing it to that label file, okay, including that long path. And then we close out that array and then we close out that whole call. All right. Then everything else down here, we're going to read from CAM1. We're set on CAM1. We're going to convert it to a CUDA type object. We're going to recognize that CUDA type object. And then we are going to come down here 
and identify what it is. All right, guys, let's right mouse click. We're not going to hold our breath on this one because the first time you run these models, it might take two or three minutes because the Tensor RT goes in and starts optimizing itself. So even though it's trained, it sort of starts running some optimization. So the first time we run this, this can take two or three minutes. Or sometimes it can just crash immediately without doing anything like it did for us uh, here. Image failed to load network. So I probably have an error in here somewhere. Okay, guys, this really looks right. So <clears throat> the only thing that I can think is, the only thing that I can think is, it doesn't like this shortcut to home. And so instead of the squiggly for the shortcut to home, I'm going to put slash home. So slash takes you to the root, then to home, then to my username, PJM. Right there, you need to put your username, not my username. I'm PJM. And then the same thing over here. This is just all I can think. Everything looks good, but I don't think it likes the squiggly. So we're going to go slash home slash PJM. And now we have an absolute path to those two files that it's looking for. So let me make this down here. Let me get it back over here. And now let's run this thing. Run Python file and terminal. Now it might take a few minutes to run again because the first time it runs this thing, it does a lot of optimization and a lot of learning that it doesn't do after this. Now look at this. I think it is, it's, it's working on the graph. That's good. It's uh, looked through 28 layers. And so it's doing a lot of stuff here. And we're just going to be patient and let this thing run. Okay, look at that. A lot of stuff happening. A lot of happy stuff happening. All right, Tensor RT is doing its magic. This is the fun part here. And then, guys, next time you run the program, it won't take but just, you know, 15, 20 seconds to run it. But the first time, it's got to go in and really optimize that model. All happy looking stuff here that we're seeing. Now the first question is, will it run? And then the second question is, will it recognize these single board computers? And so we got a couple of things we got to look at here. I think, all right, boom, look at that. Shazam, look at that. Do you see that? Arduino Uno at 16 frames per second. Yes. Now let's uh, <coughs> let's kind of spin it around here. Arduino Uno. Arduino Uno. You see all these different views. It knows it as the Arduino Uno. And that's really good. Okay. And let's kind of lift it up. You see we're kind of, because I, we did such a good job, at that training data, it's recognizing it from a lot of different angles. Okay, we're going to say the Arduino Uno worked. Okay, so now what is this? Raspberry Pi Zero, giddy up. Look at that, Raspberry Pi Zero. It's recognizing it. Let's see. That is doing amazingly well. All right, you ready? Arduino Nano, boom! Look at that. I'm going to give it a little focus. Guys, the reason I like the ELP camera is you can focus it manually because I have such trouble with the autofocus on those Logitech cameras. Arduino Nano, it got that one. Now for the big test. Jetson Xavier NX, it got it. Look at that. All different possible angles. Okay, and then let's come in here and let's put the Raspberry Pi 3. Look at that. All right, now let's look over here and it recognizes that as the Jetson Nano. Look at that, the Jetson Nano, Raspberry Pi 3, Jetson Xavier NX, Arduino. Arduino Nano. 
you see you don't want to start getting that other thing in there because you see it starts looking over there at that and then we have the Arduino Uno. Okay, guys, this is just really, really, really exciting. Now, what I'll say is, is that we kind of did a simple training with uh, kind of like the hundred types of images. And, you know, to have it really do more than that, you'd have to take a lot more pictures and you would have to do a lot more of the optimizations. But you could see that this would be useful, like if you had like a little assembly line and wanted to know uh, what was coming, uh, coming down the conveyor belt, you could look at it and certainly it would recognize it in a condition like that. And also like what if you, you know, you could just make these things and then have it remember what your different components were, put it under there and it would tell you what the component was. All right, guys, I am just super excited about this. This really, really, really works very, very well. In fact, I would say that this works a lot better than what I had anticipated it was going to work. And so with just a little bit of training, we have this thing recognizing six different boards. And we could train on a lot more than that. And that program uh, does get NVIDIA put together. It really makes the data collection a lot easier because you just it kind of organize it and you're just sitting there hitting the space bar as you put your pictures together okay guys let me know down below did you actually get this thing working and let me just uh, let me just quit out of this and just remind you that uh, you know I showed you that github where you could get my uh, if where you could get my uh, training data let's see right here uh, github.com slash mcwhorpj and then slash board training data and then what you would do is you would clone okay you would click clone and then you would come here and copy that and then you would go into this folder okay the my train folder and in there in the terminal if you did uh, get clone and that address that you copied it would bring that whole thing down but it would put it in a new folder you would have to take the stuff out of that folder to bring it up here right then you would go in and you would do your training you would go in and you would do the training and then exporting the model and then you could be working with exactly the same images that I'm working with but half the battle is you putting together a good training set. So if you're trying to debug things or don't know why things are not working exactly the way that you wanted them to, what you could do is go in and use my data. But what you've just got to be very careful of is you've got to be very careful when you give these commands to, you know, give it the right path. So like when you're training, you have to make sure that you go to that Python, I mean, you have to make sure that you go to that uh, classification folder, okay? And then you've got to make sure that you put those paths in right. The paths worked fine with the shortcuts when we were running the program, but then inside of our Python program, OpenCV, it wanted the absolute path from the root, not the shortcut to the squiggly. It didn't seem to recognize the shortcut to the squiggly. Okay, man, this is a little bit tedious, but I've shown you everything that you need in order to train your own uh, deep neural network uh, through transfer learning. So you guys, leave me a comment down below. Let me know if anybody was able to get this working. Let me know how it worked for you. Let me know what you trained on, what you're thinking about doing. I think this is just really, really slick. Okay, guys, uh, remember uh, that there's some really cool stuff going on also over on the Jetson, uh, on the Jetson Xavier NX uh, lessons. You guys might want to check some of those out as well because a lot of that stuff will run on the Jetson Nano as well. All right, Paul McCorder from TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.